Taisha, we're on the air. Welcome to the Earth Mystery Show. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. And may I, be, before we begin, I know you announced my name, and I don't know what kind of, in, you gave an introduction. But I, I would like to state my name again, because we always begin our lectures and interviews by stating our names. My name is Taisha Avalar, and we stated because it is a dream. Sorcerers say that when, when a person reaches the final stages of dreaming, they are what they dream. And so Taisha Avalar is, is our, the dream that I am dreaming. So therefore, for magical purposes, we always begin by stating our names, our magical names. So I, I was going to ask you to do that because I knew you would want to anyway. Well, thank you. Okay. So Let me ask you, just since we're on the name, a little bit more about the name. You met Don Juan, the, uh, the Yaqui Indian sorcerer who Carlos Castaneda wrote ten books about. You read him, met him under the name of John Michael Abelar. Yes. The name Abelar means what? Well, Abelar is, is really is a line, is a name that is given to the stalkers of Don Juan's lineage. So the, if you've noticed, uh, you also come across the name Grau. Right, Florinda Donner Grau, and your teacher, uh, or your mm -hmm. introduction to the Sorcerer's World, Clara Grau. Yes, so the the stalkers were given the name Avalar, and the, the dreamers were given the name Grau, and they alternate generation to generation. So even the Nawals are given Grau, the Nawal Julian was Julian Grau, and so that every other generation, uh, the name alternates. But those are just uh, des designators as to the predilection of the, the person, whether he should be a dreamer or a stalker. But Don Juan has also used the name Dila Grau, hasn't he? Yes. So he would be... Grau, that, that is, uh, Carlos uses that name. Carlos used the name Dila uh, in, in some of his... Uh, the names really don't... Diff we use many, many different names depending on what our, our purpose is. And um, so the, the, the uh, it, right now, I am Taisha Avalar because this, this is the dream that we're dreaming now. But those things change, and the names just uh, signify the, the intent that has been set up. And it's like an a amalgamation of a particular intent, and that name triggers that, um, that dream. I think that I understand from my readings what stalking is. Uh -huh. For the listeners who don't know what the word stalking is, could you give us a brief uh, description of what yeah. stalking is? Stalking is really the, um, the when the assemblage point moves. Now, I, I, I think your listeners should be familiar with the term the assemblage point. It's so. that position on the luminous, uh, when you see the luminous body uh, as a energy conglomeration, there's one place on it that is very well lit up, and that is the center of consciousness, and, and sources call it the assemblage point. But when you move that in dreaming, uh, which it moves naturally in sleep, you have to be able to keep it in a position to long enough in order to amalgamate or recognize that new reality. Because if it just shifts randomly, you have a uh, random... Um, like in dream, your, your, your dreams just shift off. Your perception is very random. But stalking is the ability to maintain the assemblage point fixed in any particular position after it has been displaced through dreaming. So they really go hand in hand. People say, well, she's a stalker, Florinda Donna Grau is a dreamer. No, we're both. And that's why the names uh, really uh, don't, aren't rigid or fixed. Every dreamer has to be a stalker because if you don't have that discipline or the ability to keep the assemblage point fixed at any particular position, then the, you, the energy is dispersed. You're unable to perceive any reality, uh, including our own, because what we're doing now in this reality is keeping, uh, we're stalking. We're stalking our world, the world of everyday life, by keeping our energy center or assemblage point fixed at a certain position, enabling us to perceive the world of everyday life. And stalking uh, on another level is the ability to, let's say, uh, flesh out the reality that we perceive by 
uh, labeling, categorizing, creating order. And that's what a stalker does. He takes the perceptions that come to, to him or her uh, directly via his, his energy body, and he creates order. He, he creates a structure that is recognizable and, and real, just as real as, as the reality of everyday life, because we are also doing stalking. Just We learned it very, very early when, when we learned to amalgamate perception. And we also learned to do stalking so that we could create the agreement that this whatever world that we live in is real. And, and sorcerers do stalking with other dream positions. So um, You've done some very interesting positions from what I've gathered in your life. And if I might tell the listeners about one of them, it was uh, Sheila Waters, the, the wonderful businesswoman. Ah, uh, yes. And you saw a demonstration of that. I saw a demonstration of it. And if I might just tell them a small anecdote after... Um, you were Sheila Waters, and when you returned to uh, Taisha Abelar, huh? I came up to, just to play with you, and I asked you, would Sheila Waters get coffee for the men? Oh, yes, I remember that. And you instantly became Sheila Walter Waters. You, you, there wasn't even a microsecond of delay before you answered me as Sheila Waters, so your stalking was uh, perfect. It's um, one of our... We, of course, we were very well-trained. I mean, our, all of our adult life really was... Uh, in the sorcerer's world, and, and that is what we have become. Uh, uh, we, we have been dreaming different positions. Therefore, I say the names. Uh, Sheila Waters is the name of a, a position of the assemblage point, a dream position. Um, and in order to be f to shift from one position to the next, the assemblage point has to be absolutely fluid. Um, stalking maintains it. So it, it seems to have a rigidity associated with it, uh, but it is not rigid the way we are in our everyday lives where we maintain this world as the only world through our reality, is the only reality, and we are incapable of letting go, um, especially uh, um, the, let, let's say, females are, are tend to be more fluid in that they, they, um, they are not... The, the bastions of the social order, whereas the males, they, by just because because our reality of everyday life demands it, males need to uh, be the upholders of the, the great institutions, which are really institutions uh, created in the domain of intent and consciousness. Uh, even our, our, our political systems, our religious systems, our, our the legal, the medical professions, all those are areas where uh, where our, we have put energy and, and we, we have built up, uh, so, sociologists call it glosses or, or uh, interpreta interpretive structures, structures of interpretation. And those structures have to be held in place via energy and, and intersubjective energy uh, in order that we can all agree what uh, politicians do or what is done in, in any other aspect of life. And um, stalkers then would go into any of these areas and find out what, what is the structure, what is, what is the interpretive system that, and the, the energetically what, not just in, intellectually, but because we're not, of course, doing any of these things intellectually in our everyday world either. We are the politicians. We are these things. So that a stalker would find out energetically the ramifications of any of these structures and then reproduce them energetically. But going back to what I was saying, the, the males need to uphold those structures. So their assemblage points are very um, fixed, rigid. So it's difficult for them to move. They are the masterful stalkers. Uh, it's, it's more difficult for them to do dreaming, uh, although, they, of course, they do it at night. But if they are going to be doing dreaming like sorcerers do it, they would have to go through this, the seven gates of dreaming, which Carlos Castaneda, in his book, The Art of Dreaming, he outlines each of these gates that a male sorcerer needs to pass through in order to move his assemblage point. Now, females don't have to go through these seven gates. They, they just can do dreaming very, very naturally There's because their assemblage point is more fluid and it 
even even during their menstrual cycles, the, the assemblage point already starts to, to shift slightly off its moorings, and so they, females, women, could, we can perceive things, um, other things more readily that are not permissible within our, our social framework. In order to get the energy for dreaming or get the energy for perfect stalking, in your book, you mentioned, um, at least Clara told you in your book, The Sorcerer's Crossing, that a woman should be celibate. Is that true for a man also? Well, the, there's, there's this, this question that's always um, has charged, of course, with all kinds of um, um, attachments and emotional commitments. Um, it depends. If, if it, it goes to the, back to the the sorcerer's conception um, the idea, it's not an idea, but they, they, they have come upon it through their seeing um, how energetic that person is. Now, if, if a person was conceived uh, with a great jolt of energy, of course, coming from his parents, then he may, he or she may have uh, excess energy that they don't have to be celibate. Uh, and they can use that energy to um, actually we're not saying people can't get married or have families or anything. they they can there's other avenues that they they can um, express their impeccability in or their sorcerer's training but uh, if a person does not have the energy of uh, within his own energetic body and by i mean the initial energy that he was given at, at um, conception, at birth, then it is better for them uh, to conserve that energy and to, to use it for dreaming. Because sorcerers use, uh, to do dreaming, they use the, the, the original sexual energy, and it, it gets transformed in, in the energy body, but that's what everyone starts out with, that energy, that one, the, the, the base, basic energy. And that's why when... when um, we talk about recapitulation, the, re the process of, of regaining the energy that was uh, spent and still caught in the past. We always begin, or we were, we were told that everyone has to make a list of their uh, sexual encounters because that is the basic energy that they can then use to perform other sorcery uh, feats, like dreaming and uh, uh, acquiring a internal silence. Because if you don't have the energy, you can't, you can't be silent. And that sounds like a contradiction, but our internal dialogue, it, it, it's like uh, something was turned on and it just goes, runs on and on and on, and it takes energy to shut it off because it's like an, a self-propelling mechanism that keeps the social structure, the social order moving. It, these are our internal dialogue, if we pay attention to it, really is uh, a constant uh, reaffirmation of the world as we see it, and in particular of our place in the world, of, of, of how we see ourselves, how, wh what we want. Uh, sorcerers say now, Don Juan always says that there's a, 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 a dysfunction, a deterioration that, that has happened that has given too much emphasis on the self. That, that shouldn't really be there for our uh, efficient um, functioning out in, in our lives. Too much energy, it, uh, it's, it's an imbalance. Uh, too much energy is being given to the defense of the self, to this, it's like a big mouth out there that says, me, 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 and it just goes on and on, and the, the me or the I has to be constantly fed, and that takes tremendous amount of energy. All, all our waking hours are either deployed in defending the self, propping up the self, uh, uh, in the presentation of the self, in, in the eyes of others, in our daily lives, or in our, our, our mating and re reproduction areas in, in that we need to find, find love, relationships, uh, um, marriage, reproduction. There's a mandate to reproduce, a biological mandate, but there, there's also that mandate to, to evolve and to reproduce at this point w with the conditions of the world the way they are. Um, it is almost logical or, or 
more beneficial to move that energy into the mandate of of involve evolving and uh, reaching some of these other positions of the assemblage point that would uh, in in a sense recharge the the human being give him a, a jolt of an energetic jolt that he so desperately needs in in our day and age where everything is is really um, even the world is at an energetic low in the sense that our resources are being depleted and uh, f physically our bodies aren't in that great shape so there is that mandate to 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 evolve and, and use other areas of our the totality of our our potential as sentient beings and uh, and by moving energy away from these areas of reinforcing the self the self-image that looking glass self always making sure that we don't lose face and uh, uh, fighting with the petty tyrants in our daily lives all that takes energy so so the first stage if if we want to do uh, we could call it sorcery but you, you don't need to use that term if we want to expand our perception we need to redeploy energy from these areas that are really uh, take the brunt of our our life force and move it into elsewhere I have a couple of questions that are um, just technical questions the first one is on recapitulating your life you start with listing everybody you've ever met or dealt with especially sexual partners yes then as far as the actual process goes you take a deep breath as you, from starting with your face facing your right shoulder, and you sweep across to your left shoulder, taking a deep breath in. Uh huh. Then you breathe it out as you go to your right shoulder. Uh huh. Then what? And then you move your head back to the center. Okay. In some places, I think it was in your book, or maybe it was Carol Tiggs mentioned a sweeping breath, where you go back and forth with your head a couple of times without breathing after you've come to the center. Is that? Yes. Now the. The technical aspect of the breathing isn't that crucial. Ne neither is the place of where the recapitulation is done. And I, sh I should point this out because uh, it, it always comes up, well, I don't have a cave <laughs> where I can retreat to for a, s a certain amount of time and do the recapitulation. And uh, The recapitulation is a, is a, um, a, a wonderful sorcery a technique that was handed down from the ancient sorcerers in order to free the energy trapped in the past that they are remembered selves our personal history now that is the intent that is set up and, and the most important thing of the recapitulation is to have internal integrity an unbending purpose and to link yourself to that intent the intent that it is already there that is in our books that is set up uh, how this is done and where this is done and when this is done of course has to depend on individual uh, circumstance right because not everyone is out in the desert or not everyone so, so you can recapitulate just sitting in your car as you're driving along without doing the, the breathing and as long as your intent is correct um florinda donna Grau recapitulated did enormous recapitulation on riding through a bus in, in mexico down to oaxaca under horrendous circumstances, if, if you're familiar with the buses. Yes, I've been on them. But, uh, and you do many, many different recapitulations. We're recapitulating to this day. Walking down the street, now I, I recapitulate. If, if something triggers something, or let's say you're uh, at work and you, ha you have a, a break, you recapitulate there. The reason they, they say that, that you should start with a list, and, and Ideally, you really should begin with some sort of structure because our concentration is not that well honed at, at the initial stages. And the list um, does two things. One, first of all, we, we start with the, the, the sexual experiences because, again, as I said, that is the, the main energy that is going to help you do the, help you, to give you the energy to do the, the, the other areas. Uh, the list serves as a matrix for, co for hooking your concentration and to create a list of everyone that you've ever known uh, in your life that in, in itself takes a great deal of concentration and uh, in a way it also determines well do you really want to do the recapitulation people uh, start their list and then they, they stop because it, it's too much effort or they're not 
really committed. So the list sets it up. And then then you go from your list and you find a spa- a place where, um, if, if possible, a place that is, is quiet and uh, put some pressure on the energy body. The luminous egg is, uh, fr- from the point of view of Sears, is about an arm's distance from both, if you extend your arms to both sides mm-hmm. uh, and to the front, that, and, and draw a circle, that is the size of the luminous egg from the point of view of, of Sears. The assemblage point of, for human beings is to the back, between the shoulder blades and arm's distance to the back. Um, so if you sit in a, in a car or in a cave, small cave, or in, in a small closet or in a, in a shower stall, uh, a, a big box, then you notice that there's some pressure ex- exerted on your energy body. And that that is why... It, sorcerers say that uh, ideally it would be advisable to, to, to sit in, in something like that um, because it, 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 alert, it keeps you alert. It, it, it stimulates the energy body. But you don't need to be... Uh, people with claustrophobia do, wouldn't feel at all comfortable in small, confined spaces, so they can do it anywhere, anywhere at all where they can concentrate. And um, so you... you and the, the breathing that, that is accompanying, I, they just had, in, in my context, they called it the sweeping breath because you sweep and you actually feel like a giant broom. You feel like fiber, using your energy body, of course, you feel like a f- fibers being swept uh, free of debris. And that's a sensation that uh, after you've been doing recapitulating for a while that, that you will get um, because you will be become aware of your your energy body recapitulating uh this technique works directly on the energy body and yes you can start on your your right shoulder you inhaling and you sweep to the left shoulder as you inhale you pull back everything that it, the energy that was trapped and as you're visualizing of course first you have to set up the scene that means that you 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 see you visualize everything all the detail in as in as much detail as possible uh the scene uh, if you're in an in, in in your living room or whatever wherever you're sweeping something you see the couch the curtains the tv the the rug the walls the all the detail and then you put yourself in the scene and then you see also the people of course that that are there and then you you just watch for a while see what what goes on and you see yourself in action sorcerers say i have another small technical question that has puzzled me uh, ever since i read your book and that is the dog manfred in the book don juan said that he was part of his sorcerer's party yes and um he seemed like one of the most wonderful characters in the book could you tell me about manfred a little bit yes um manfred was and is because he he his awareness is still uh, a dog existence. No, he he succeeded in going with Don Juan's party. Uh, he he was an old sorcerer that tried to make the crossing. The ancient sorcerers, through dreaming, of course, they would take uh, different um, forms in order to to practice their their dreaming, and those forms would be different positions of the assemblage point. But they depending on their energy and their impeccability, um, some of them would uh, be trapped in different dream uh, positions. And they did not make it to the ultimate goal, which is total freedom. Uh, Man- Manfred was an, a sorcerer that was trapped and at a dream position, uh, which was the energy formation of of, of a dog, he had enough energy in uh, at the moment of of death or dissolution to to get in, into this form of a dog, so that he wouldn't be totally um, dissolved. Awareness would not be totally lost. So it was like an escape route <laughs> that he used, and of course he 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 was profoundly um, the tragic tragic case because because his awareness was so keen but his physical form was so limited and and he would he would rage and rage uh, 
but on an energetic this, this is a good question because when you're uh, when you perceive things we, we perceive them in the, in the shape of physical forms and we are interacting with with dogs and trees and, and people and uh, uh, things objects but our energy bodies uh, perceive can perceive energy and sorcerers uh, Don Juan and and especially uh, Emilito who who um, who really uh, Manfred was his his his, his protege his ward in that sense uh, they interacted with him on an energetic level so he was not a dog uh, he was a, a uh, an, an energetic energy being an, an entity and so when I was in Clara, Clara's house uh, something in my body out of I can only explain it out of out of affection or compassion enabled me to transcend seeing Manfred as a dog I don't like dogs I mean I, I actually I, I've always had a fear of dogs since childhood when you know I was sort of not attacked by a dog but you know, a dog just sort of tumbled with me jumped on top of me and you know, I was, became terrified but there was something about Manfred I could see that this was not a dog there was an energetic link of, of pure affection um, because we're both tragic <laughs> cases and and in that sense um, we made a pact and we, we said that whoever reaches uh, the freedom the energy level first will help pull the other one and that was a pact that, that stays pacts and agreements between sorcerers or potential sorcerers they 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 last forever for eternity they transcend the realm of everyday life because as this is not the realm that we we really are interested in and we we want to move out of this realm so they have to affection and 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 um uh, uh, vows and, and, and agreements uh, like that purpose has to transcend just the, the, the ordinary the, the level of everyday life we're not interested in, in giving uh, uh, in terms of love human love that you know is replaceable as soon as you find something better sorcerer affection uh, it just stays forever it cannot be replaced you cannot change the head on the person um, and and now you're loving someone else. And no, it those 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 vows stay forever. And Man, and we have this agreement. And I'm still in in touch with with Manfred because he is is pulling me. He is, he went with Don Juan when they when they left. They when they reached a certain stage, they felt it was ready to go. It was time to leave, and they were able because they had the mass to pull out of the the realm of everyday life which is really saying that they had perfected all these other dream positions and their dream bodies to such a state that they could go uh, with their awareness intact and of course Manfred uh, now is is the sorcerer that he always was but he now has the mass of other people or, I mean not people but other sorcerers around him but he he um, we definitely have this link and um, he, he's helping me to be impeccable, just, well, just as I... I love dogs, and I love dogginess, and uh, everything that Manfred did in that book I still remember is a, the best part. He would, he would actually protect me uh, and, and, and take me, show me things. And At first I didn't, at the beginning, I, of course, I didn't, didn't believe that I was a dog because my rational... Our rational mind is so strong that glosses back back to this term of glo the glosses that we have set up that that make the world of everyday life perceivable and agreeable are of course so strong we give all our energy to um, uh, the gloss to, at, at this point in in our daily life no the human beings give all their energy to the mask of the cell to keep the world in order right. but so therefore, we 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 see dogs and and again trees and things like that. And to break that perceptual bias takes recapitulating, takes energy. Let me take a different um, 
tack here for our remaining 20 minutes or so. Yes. I'd like to, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the works of Bob Monroe. He was one of the first guests on my show, but he um, has written books, um, Journeys Out of the Body, Far Journeys, uh, basically talking about what he would call astral travel. And his technique that he teaches people involves lying down, relaxing yourself totally mm -hmm. to a condition that he calls body asleep, mind awake. Mm -hmm. And during that process, you take all of your past garbage that you can think of and you make up a dumpster or some kind of garbage can and you visualize all that stuff and you throw it in the garbage can and you close the lid to try and break free of all that attachment. Uh -huh. And then you visualize your energy body, the luminous fibers that the sorcerers talk about, and you try and put as much energy into that as you can. And then from that point forward, um, you do various techniques to get out of your body, but basically you're becoming a focus of conscious awareness outside the body that can travel anywhere in the universe and do anything it wants. Mm -hmm. How does that differ from conscious dreaming or the sorcerer's idea of dreaming? It, um, this, if we, if we um, look at the, the, uh, the book, the, the Art of Dreaming, that's, that's really where the, the whole structure of what the dreaming process is according to uh, our sorcery tradition. It's, it's, it's outlined there in great detail. So I'm going to um, just say here that there are, are many, many different stages and, or gates of dreaming that you go through. Now, what you've been describing is a... It has similarities to, to some, of the, some of the stages of dreaming, yes, that, that first, first you need to recapitulate, except this sounds like a very fast process. Recapitulating takes... You can't just visualize and throw everything into a dumpster. You have to take every situation because energy is trapped every every memory every experience that we've had in our lives uh is is trapped in at really a, a tissue a cellular level and the the more we go back to the details the more we release everything in our let's say physical bodies we're not just interested in astral or ener energy body um so the we want to first cleanse the the memories that trigger that trigger our behavior as 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 we go through everyday life in the world. Um, then the relaxation, yes, you first stage of dreaming, you would uh, relax, and there's that twilight zone between sleep and, and being awake, and you you enable to you, you let go of of your memory of the physical body but if if the physical body is so full of um of emotional emotionally charged memories or if the mind if you can't quiet your internal dialogue then uh you won't be able to relax and let go to even get into into the that dream dream state so everything works hand in hand the recapitulation enables you to do dreaming by focusing your concentration, by allowing your physical body to release all those uh, charged emotions and allowing it to be uh, empty and fluid, then, um, then, you, then you do let go and you can either do dreaming while you're asleep. And if you're asleep, then you have to have that control of, of controlling what, what your perception is be uh, finding your hands or uh, any other object in the room. But that in itself is tremendously difficult unless you've already honed your concentration and your your energy body, the awareness of your energy body. So, oh, are you here? Yes, I'm here. There's something weird there. Is that from you no, or from me? Not from me. Oh, I've changed channels. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, on the um, topic of dreaming, I'm sure you get asked this every day, and that is uh, the difference between sorcerer's dreaming and lucid dreaming. Yes. Could you say that in a short uh, difference? Yes. Um, if you're if you're lu really lucid, you're doing sorcerer's dreaming. If you have the awareness and control in your dream, then you're doing dreaming. Your assemblage point moved, and you uh, you can act in that dream as if you were awake. Don Juan said that the universe is a predatory universe, that um, there's somebody out there that wants your energy whenever you get a little bit more. 
and uh, the second gate of dreaming, the world of inorganic beings. It sounds very much like that as a world that um, is very predatory. Is there any danger in attempting this type of dreaming without the uh, supervision of someone who knows what they're doing? Um, no, you don't need the supervision of someone who knows what they're doing. What you need is sobriety and control. You yourself have to know what you're doing because you go into the, the, the dream stages alone. Um, females, of course, don't have to worry because they, they're so fluid, they just flow in and out, they move their assemblage points, and, and the universe, according to, to sorcerers or, or seers, is basically uh, female energy. And these, these predators, the inorganic beings, are more after male energy. But um, what um, you don't, and, and this is where the danger is that you can get trapped, but the traps are really if you indulge, if you haven't recapitulated and you're, you're not fluid enough to um, not indulge in emotions like fear or, or uh, affection. Because the in, inorganic beings, they cater to, to uh, our emotions. They want to, to give us what we want. Inorganic beings are really just energy formations. We, do, we don't want to think of them as, as uh, you know, beings from outer space or, you know, th th um, they're, they're en energy that seeks energy. And uh, unless, if you're, if you're totally indulging and, and uh, uh, haven't recapitulated and haven't don't have the control, then you become more or less a victim. For example, let's say if in your everyday life, you're, we call it the, the, the poor baby syndrome, if you're always the victim and people are doing everything to you and you, you, um, you complain because the world isn't giving you this and that, you have this sort of um, defeatist attitude, and it, then you go into dreaming, well, you're taking that with you, energy body with you. Isn't that poor baby me? Uh, isn't that the modality of our time? Isn't that what we all carry in some sense? What we all carry inside, and, and it, all our waking days, you, our, our television, radio, everything reinforces that. That is the modality of our day, and we are victims. In in a sense, it is almost true because we feel we don't have the energy to to jolt ourselves out of that, and we and we really don't because of our, our depletion, our, our depleted state. So it's a self-fulfilling um, cycle. Uh, but only by redeploying that energy of everyday life and d through there's the sorcery passes, the, the um, uh, movement, jolting the energy body, uh, the recapitulating, only through those sorcery techniques or not doing techniques that actually break that reflexivity, that, that intersubjective agreement that, yes, I am a poor baby, everyone's a poor baby, and, of course, everybody reinforces everyone else by giving solace and let me tell you my problems and you don't understand me, um, uh, let's share our, you know, we feel great if everyone has problems, and, and we really love people who are worse off than we are, but it's very difficult to love someone who's, who's strong and happy, and, and here we're, we're the, the poor babies, and they should be loving us. So it's hard to give affection, but everybody wants uh, affection. But So these things have to be straightened out, have to be cleared out uh, through the recapitulation, through not doing, through stalking yourself in, in the everyday life before you really tackle heavy-duty dreaming. Then if you've, if you've straightened those areas out and if you have a strong energy body, then you go into dreaming like, like, a, like a warrior, like an impeccable being, and what can touch you? Because what can touch you in this, in this world? If anything can deplete, deplete you and, and weaken you and, and call forth these poor baby things or, or self-importance, I'm the greatest thing that I ever lived in, in the world of everyday life, then you know, you know for a fact it, it's going to come up in your dream realities. And that was the, 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 the death trap, the pitfalls of the ancient sorcerers who, who were masterful dreamers. They, they could dream, go to take tremendous journeys into different folds of the braid, like the different levels of, of reality, 
peels of the onion, no matter how astral plane, I don't, however you want to call it, the, the terminology doesn't matter. They would move their assemblage points to all these different levels. But because of egomania, they were so rigid in their, their um, assertions of the self, and you take yourself into dreaming, uh, they, they got stuck there. They got, let's say, bought uh, uh, by the inorganic beings, and they became their, their slaves in that sense because of the, p- the power that they received from uh, areas of dreaming. Given, given this knowledge that the sorcerers are now uh, distributing to the world in the form of books and talks, mm-hmm. wouldn't the answer be for uh, us as a society or as a, as a race to begin the recapitulation project in ch- childhood for parents to teach their children recapitulation, to sit around and do it together to try and um, break this uh, tyranny of the self before it ever begins? Um, yes, it, they, they could break the, that self-importance before it begins, but not the recapitulation in terms of... Uh, oh. Well, first, first the, the, the parent needs to recapitulate in order to to serve as a model let's say for the for for the child parents of course the child emulates the assemblage the position of the assemblage point of the parent and if whatever the parent is that that's what the child is going to to copy and emulate so if the the parents especially mothers who are so close in contact with their children uh, recapitulate and like you say get get clear out some of these areas of self-importance then the child won't even um, focus on these things they'll be doing their their work they'll be learning they'll be be expanding the perception um, they'll they won't get twisted energetically the way we have become because of uh, a lack of awareness um, you can recapitulate together with with your chi- with your children, but it's it's more advisable just just to clean up your life first and then serve as an example to the child, because they don't have all that much to recapitulate. I mean, right? I was thinking if they if they just um, held on to their original energy so they wouldn't lose it and re- recapitulate it starting at an early age. Yes, um, they would never come to the point where they'd have to spend years recapitulating they would it would be a natural thing that would just they go out into the into the world to, uh, or they, they they'll be able to see what uh, what goes on but that really comes from from the parents awareness uh, if they don't have that that impeccability of of let's say giving affection without expecting things into return not this merchant mentality that we all have that is again a modality of our day that we always want, some, you know, what's in it for me? Then, if 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 the parents don't have, if they they cling to that, then the child doesn't have a chance. But if if they recapitulate and be impeccable parents, then those children are will be impeccable children, and they will they will have what Don Juan calls uh, perfect tonals. That is their 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 being that is in the world of everyday life will be energetic strong and will have a, a positive outlook and will be able to to function in the world on a high energetic level rather than being defeated by the world and the challenges that, that we all have to face on a day-to-day basis. 